September 2012 marked the 90th anniversary of the Smyrna catastrophe when much of the second largest city in the Ottoman Empire was destroyed by fire during the final phase of the Greco-Turkish War. The calamity marked the end of a strong Christian presence in the historic Aegean coastal regions and turned hundreds of thousands of Greeks and Armenians into refugees. In tonight's illustrated lecture, Professor Richard Hovhannisian will discuss the important role of Smyrna, or Izmir, in modern Armenian history and the inferno that engulfed the city in September 1922. It's very difficult to introduce Professor Hovhannisian in a, in a brief summary because he's accomplished so much in a long <coughs> career, but I will keep it short at his request. He's been professor of Armenian and Near Eastern History and held the Armenian Educational Foundation Chair in Modern Armenian History at UCLA, where he's been on the faculty since 1962. The chair was recently renamed the Richard Hovhannisian Chair in Modern Armenian History. It's now held by Sebu Aslanian. Now, you may have heard that Professor Hovhannisian is retired, but that would be far from the truth. Uh, as far as I can tell, he's as busy and productive as ever. He's still teaching, giving lectures around the world, and editing a series of book, books. He currently serves as the Distinguished Chancellor's Fellow at Chapman University in Orange County, and the Distinguished Visiting Lecturer at, a Distinguished Visiting Lecturer at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, Professor Hovhannisian is the author of Armenia on the Road to Independence and the definitive four-volume history of the Republic of Armenia. He has edited and contributed to more than 20 books, including the Armenian Genocide in Perspective, the Armenian People from Ancient to Modern Times, Remembrance and Denial, and the Armenian Genocide, Cultural and Ethical Legacies. Professor Hovhannisian is the editor of the recently published Armenian Smyrna Izmir, which is the 11th volume of Proceedings of the UCLA Conference Series, Historic Armenian Cities and Provinces. And I know I've seen many of you at, at many of those uh, conferences that were held over many years' time. Copies of the book are available for purchase and signing this evening. Professor Hovhannisian traveled to Izmir and environs in June 2012 as the historian guide for Nasser Armenian Heritage Tour led by Armin Orion. And he will be leading another Nasser trip to historic Armenia with Armin Orion this June, which you're all welcome to consider joining. He served as a consultant to the California State Board of Education, contributing to the state's social studies model curriculum on human rights and genocide. A Guggenheim Fellow, Professor Hovhannisian was elected to the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia in 1990. Among the many recognitions of his great achievements, he was presented the Moses Koronazi Medal and award, and award by the President of the Republic of Armenia. He's been honored by His Holiness Kavikim I with the Medal of St. Mestre Mashtos for his advancement of Armenian studies. And just last November, he was honored with a pontifical encyclical by His Holiness Kadikin II in a ceremony held here at the Western Diocese in recognition of his invaluable contributions in the field of Armenian genocide recognition, his civic activities, and his numerous scholarly achievements. Uh, let's all give Professor Hovhannisian a warm welcome. Your Eminence, uh, uh, thank you for hosting this evening and sponsoring the evening along with Nasser and the uh, Eskijan uh, Arab Museum. I have a, a little problem uh, in that uh, I know that some of you have difficulty with Armenian and some of you have difficulty with English. Uh, and I'll try um, not in a not a very good way probably to switch back and forth from Armenian to English. I hope you will be Nerokalak. Nerokalak. Kidekais Shudoga Modena Hayos Seras Panujan Haram Yaga Zanazan Badras Shunder Gubusan Deli Gunanan Kizara Kurdin. But it's better to think for Aid Haram Yagi had. 
Watch me ein higher on het alsam ilens hailenike. I I ask you, I Christianiaj over there. Mitchell all of winner, Rock um Pokshar Pokrasio um Shuchaner Mitch Panagain, uh Shuch Megugas Million Kone, Yeti Wachabel, uh Huiner, I Shuchani Mitch. Yeah, there must be the thing come uh Tidenk. I got sales from two neighbors make uh and talent and task. Or Chiskasav Dustin Tavagano, your Chibe Chatsav Dustin Tavagano. I like them, Yotana Sunagan Tavagan, the Charter, or to Hamdi or any Sunagan Tavagan, and Avri Avri the Charter. Yegan Yerit Turkere, Yavadana Charter, Yerkiligio Charter. Aba Aba Tsevasman Tuni, if Tsevasman Tuno, Chibe Chatsav. Or the Manatin Dagavin Mikani Harur Hazar, yet the watch of Likan make million Christianer, Pokerasio match, Kokavora Park winner, but Zeus higher. Vorunk Vorunk Snavadaga, I think to Kerem Badagner Makra Kordzel, Ser Pazabil, I'd Daverem. Հետա գրական է, որ այս երեկ այս ընթացքը, որ գյոտանասունական թվագանդերում սկսավ և շարնակվեցավ մենչև 20-ական թվագանդերում, 22 թվագանը իզմիրի աղետով, հրտեով երեկ տարկեր թրկական իշխանություններ գային, առաջինը � բարճա գարդներ, ավա երկասար թուրկերու ռեջիմը և ամենա վերջը ուրեմ է մստապակե մալին։ Այս երակը կարծես իրարով և համախոտ չեին, և վելը նունիչ տշնամագան էին իրար հետ, բայց իր այնգս բոլորը հետևեցան ա� Եվ ազալակրեն այդ պոքրասյան և հայգրան բարձրավանդավը իր բնիկ ժվողորդը։ Հայգրան զմյուրնայի այս հատորը նվիրված է որեղան այս իր ինսուն ամյակին այս աղետին, որ դեղուն ես ա� փոքրասյու կաղակները և գարձեցին, որ կանի որ բադրազմը հաչող ավարդած էր տաշնագից պետությունները հաղթած էին, որ ավական իրենց համար պայլում պիմը բար իր վերատարձան փոքրասյան ասյու իրենց կաղակները հարցի շուրջ է որ այսօր միտի խոսին և ծույց դամ մի քանի այսպես սահիկներ։ If you didn't understand me very briefly, I'll say that three different regimes existed in the Ottoman Empire from the end of the 19th century to the 1920s. There was the Sultan Abdul Hamid, the Young Turk regime, which perpetrated the genocide of the Armenians, and then Mustafa Kemal, uh, regime who ended the uh, period of Christian presence in the Near East with the uh, destruction of Smyrna in 1922. These three regimes are, were competitors with one another, but they all had the single objective of cleansing Asia Minor and the Armenian Plateau of its Christian population. So as we approach the 100th anniversary, we should see perhaps in the broader sense that the Armenian Genocide was a very important part and a central part, but not the only part of a plan of destruction and elimination of the um, Christian presence in the historical Christian region. And you know, if you want to take a broader view, uh, I I'm sometimes don't want to think take that view, but I'm wondering if that process is still not continuing in the Near East as Christians are still being 
forced out of countries where they want to stay but have not allowed to, and so a process of de-Christianization going on. The uh, <clears throat> Smyrna Calamity comes at the end of World War I, at a time when Turkey is defeated, when um, the Allies allow the Greek government and the Greek army to occupy this second largest city in the Turkish Empire, Izmir or Smyrna. Uh, the Greeks felt that that was a part of their historic homeland, and it was. And very interestingly, uh, the Greek population in Smyrna outnumbered all other ethnic elements. Uh, it was a Christian majority in this city, rare in the Ottoman Empire, and therefore it was referred to by the Turks as um, Yavuz. It was the infidel city uh, at the time. So the, army, the Greeks were allowed to occupy it in 1919, and there then took place a war <coughs> between the forces of the Turkish leader Mustafa Kemal and the Greeks, and at the first the Greeks were very successful, but by 1921 the tide had turned, and in 1922 the Greek army, uh, armies surrendered, not surrendered, but retreated, and the, and the, and the Turkish armies advanced uh, towards Smyrna, pushing in front of them the thousands and thousands and thousands of Greek Christians, along with Armenians, who had returned to their homes after the genocide. And they ended up along the Aegean Sea. Uh, on uh, September 9th, it was, 90 years ago, the Turkish army entered this Christian city. At first, the Christians were relieved because it seemed to be in relatively good order, the entrance. But already two days later, um, there was trouble. The Armenians of Smyrna were not so numerous. They were about 10,000 in the city and about 25,000 in the surroundings of Smyrna. And if you can see the map, Smyrna is far away. Izmir is on the Aegean Sea, far away from the Armenian highland. To the very right end of this map, you'll see a Gesaria, Caesarea, Kaiseri. And the Armenian highland go, goes farther to the east of that. And so we have the, our, this community, a very uh, active, merchant, mercantile Armenian community in Smyrna that's been there uh, since the 11th century and has grown. I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, maybe I should do that now. I'm going to take a big sort of gap and then I'll come back to the story. Uh, the Armenians are, are attested in uh, Smyrna already in Byzantine Empire times from the 12th century. So the Armenians were, in, uh, uh, were important merchants. And they, um, their numbers uh, increased in the 16th and 17th century because of the wars between the Ottoman Empire and the Persians. If Shah Basiorov, I think Shah Basiorov for it, Azarabur Hayer Kachtets Tebi Isfahan, I Kachten Hedo. Anishan Tungar, Araradian Tashkin Bench, Jalali Shajumagar, Abazad Nera, Spanujun Nera, Talanera Mender, Yev Vorosh Hair, Vorosh Kanabucham Hair, Pahan Kebi Aramut. And in the 17th century wars, the Ottoman Turkish wars, uh, many more Armenians came to Smyrna and its surrounding areas. It's interesting that down into the end of the 19th century in certain small villages, the Armenians were still speaking the dialect of the Ararajan plain. They were still speaking Eastern Armenian in places like Bolut in Asia Minor 
uh, a remembrance of the fact that they had fled from um, the, the Aradyan plain uh, some three or four hundred years ago and had maintained their dialect. As the Iranian Armenians and the Jufa Armenians engaged in the trade of silk, um, supplying the European uh, industrial cities with silk, and when the silk trade went on, they became very, um, you know, Armenians are adapting. They adapt, and they started to export cotton, dried fruit, um, carpets, uh, and, and other uh, goods that were welcome in, in, the, uh, in the West. The Armenians in Smyrna lived in several quarters, but their main quarter uh, was known as High Notes. High Notes. High Notes. A place where Armenians live. High Notes were even Zori Modershad. Ir Getrona Oner Substepanos Maria Gerzin. Stephen's Armenian church was in the heart of the Armenian quarter of High Notes. It was a very advanced uh, Armenian community, a very progressive Armenian community, a very enlightened Armenian community because of its contacts with the West and the Western world, and in many ways it was a pace setter uh, for the Armenian people. Uh, when the Turkish armies entered uh, Smyrna um, in September 1922, two days later um, there was trouble in High Notes. Uh, there was looting that began from by people who came from came from outside the city, and they were joined by Turks from the city. The Armenians fled to, as Armenians frequently do, they fled to Serbstepanos, the big courtyard of Serbstepanos. But then the Turks started throwing over firebombs over the walls, and the Armenians then fled toward the sea. By which time, at the sea, there were several hundred thousand Greeks who had fled from all of Asia Minor. Uh, I think the quay, the wharf. Uh, um, in September 13th, starting on September 13th, suddenly the Armenian quarter, High Notes, fire began in ten different places at the same time. Um, we all know here in Los Angeles what a Santa Ana wind is. Yeah. The winds that blow from the mountains to the sea, hot. And it was just that kind of weather in Izmir at that time. And so the fire spread from high notes all throughout the Christian quarters and down to the Levantine quarters. That is, Levantines were Europeans who had mixed Middle Easterners and were mainly Catholic, uh, French-speaking uh, uh, elements there. So the Greek quarter, the Armenian quarters, and the uh, European quarters all go up in flames in two days' time. Uh, the tragedy was compounded by the fact that in, by September 1922, the British and the Americans, who had formerly been sympathetic and supportive of the Greeks, now wanted to make an agreement with Mustafa Kemal. After all, uh, communism had taken over much of the world. They were afraid about the spread of communism to Turkey, and they felt that they needed to make um, their peace with the apparent victor in this struggle. 
And so the uh, American, the, in, in the harbor, um, you can see, the, let's have the next one, please. Yeah. Um, you, you, you can see this huge harbor, or the, the bay of uh, Izmir, Smyrna. The, it's, it's a very protected bay, and therefore excellent for trade. But um, in this harbor, in September 1922, there were 21 or 22 allied ships, vessels, war vessels. Uh, American, British, French, Italian. And they had um, orders to remain strictly neutral now in the struggle between the Greeks and the Turks. So they had orders to maintain neutrality and so when thousands of Greeks jumped into the water to swim out to the ships which are very nearby, they turned on the water hoses on these people and dumped them back into the sea. So the top it's in. Uh, it became um, the, the descriptions, and I, I have the written descriptions, I'm not going to read them to you, but the descriptions are such that <coughs> sailors on the ships recorded what they saw. One American sailor said it was terrible sight to seeing thousands of people hanging over the wharf and Turkish soldiers coming along and chopping off their hands so that they would fall into the sea and die. And another one, a British uh, officer, says when the noise of the screams of the victims became so loud that the captain of the British ship ordered the ship's band to start playing music so that the uh, drown out the sounds of the uh, cries. And not only that ship, when that one ship started playing military music, all the other ships in the harbor, allied ships, began to play music uh, with their band so that the sailors would not be disturbed uh, are traumatized by what was happening. Minchai Graga Ampur Kalaka Pernazir, Yevirbu Orf Anantad, I am, I did sub Kalaka. A British commander said it was awesomely, terribly, terribly beautiful. If Gernak Yerevagayo, Terribly, terribly beautiful in a sense, or awesome. Um, so, the population was stuck in an area twice the size of this room, with the fire on one side, the sea on the other side, Turkish army on either side of two, two kilometers and nowhere to go. And if you know what the heat of a fire is to their back, and so many of them did jump into the water and drowned. Fortunately, after a day of this terrible inferno, the Allied commanders, naval commanders, received instructions that they could take refugees on board. How many can you take? They may have rescued five or ten thousand people. But there are 200,000 people. Um, at the end of the day, 
Finally, uh, the Allies negotiated with Mustafa Kemal, who was the victor, and uh, got an agreement to give the Greeks two weeks to evacuate the Christian population. And over the next two weeks or three weeks, under uh, Allied uh, surveillance, the Greek Navy was able to come to Smyrna and take out well over a hundred thousand people to the islands, the Greek islands, to Smyrna and to the mainland. And we all know how terrible it is to be uh, um, by the end of September, um, nearly 100,000 people had been rescued. It means that there were about 100,000 who either died or were taken by the Turks just like 1915 when the Turks took the Armenian men and put them into the labor battalions. They took the young men uh, from Izmir, from Smyrna, and put them into labor battalions and shipped them to the interior as hostages. And they had to live there over a year under the indescribable conditions during which many, many of them died. And the survivors then were brought back to Greece only after the Treaty of Lausanne and the forced exchange of populations whereby 1.4 million Greeks were exchanged and forced to go to uh, Greece against their will, were exchanged with about 400,000 Muslims who lived in Greece, in Macedonia, and other areas. Uh, Of the 10,000 or 25,000 Armenians of Greater Smyrna, probably around 5,000 perished in the Great Fire and the confusion that followed. And the rest of them ended up in, uh, in Greece, in Athens, in Piraeus, in uh, Corfu, in Cyprus, and in various other places where they had to start their lives anew. I want um, to spend the rest of the time showing you uh, Armenian Smyrna, who's in Sweet Stalwin. I Amina Arach Atem Kaki Razen, 
Ոչ միայն դնդեսական, արդերական արումով, it's been the most progressive city with Istanbul or Constantinople, not only economically and in commerce, but in intellectual advancement. Along with Constantinople, it was the intellectuals of Smyrna who made Ashkarabar, the vernacular language, the language of accepted literary expression. բաշպանեց այս աշխարապարի դարածումը, այն առումով, որ պետք է տարնար մատշելի լեզու ժողորդին պետք է հասներ և ոչ միայն գղերագաններում, միայն գամ ամենա լավ զարկացած դարին։ I want, let me just start this. You see the borders of the uh, of the fire uh, starting to your left in high notes the Armenian quarter and then going toward the sea to the Greek and to the right fortunately for the uh, Jews and for the Turks their quarters were on the other side of the railway and were not affected by them and they stayed completely intact whereas the rest of the city all of Christian Smyrna was destroyed this is the Agora. Here is, uh, these are 19th century pictures of uh, the city of, of Smyrna. Mount Bacos is to its back. Let's get up the bars, Gerevan, European quarter, Greek quarter, Armenian quarter, Jewish quarter, and Turkish quarter. Turkeda, Leran. լանչեր գավրեին, ամենա հետամնած շրջանը հետակրական էր եվրովացիներու համար, որդև են նստած էին դուրսը ներգել է կաշեին և նարդի թավլու գխավային, it was a very interesting place, բայ շատ հետամնած. Here you see where the Europeans and Armenians lived Bell Vista, right on the sea. Uh, there are uh, one of the main shopping streets, uh, Rue Franc, Yevetanaik, Kerutunera, Hunarena, when the writing is in, in Greek. Uh, maybe we should make it a little darker, Bruce, can we, or not? No? Okay. Sorry. I cut it over there. That's all right. Okay. Uh, every city has a hotel where all important people stay. This was the Kramer Hotel with anybody who was anybody. Uh, came came to the Kramer Hotel on the waterfront. Uh, the theater. The Armenians um, were pioneers in the theater. They brought not only European repertoire, but they created their own repertoire as well, and also Turkish theater the Armenians created. Uh, writers and uh, intellectuals, uh, let me, I'll get to that. Here we have uh, a good panorama. Uh, the Greek cathedral of uh, St. Fotini on the uh, left. High notes, Sur Stepanos Mechtera. And another Greek church on the right. So you can see the Armenian quarter is uh, maybe a block or two from, from the sea. Uh, this is uh, Polycarp, one of the, uh, the first bishop of Smyrna was Polycarp. He was martyred here, and this is the Catholic Church of Polycarp. The Greek uh, Church of uh, Sukfotini Cathedral. And here again, high notes, because uh, red uh, tiled roofs uh, and uh, quite a prosperous Armenian quarter. In the back, where those trees are, is where they today, if you go to Smyrna or Izmir, they have the international fairgrounds. And that's where the international fairgrounds are uh, in uh, Smyrna, Yevat Goma, Gariyevis, Archigans, Varjarana, Hrebskyans, Tabrotsar, 
who will go down the Union with Sima and Debesh. And here you see the Armenian quarter, Moda Street, and here is again the picture of Sub Stepanos. Picture of an Armenian lithograph of an Armenian priest of the 17th century. Um, uh, he's done a good job, it seems to me. Uh, the courtyard, the courtyard of Sub Stepanos, interior of the church with several altars, seven steps on its altar, and next to it the Mesropian School, which was a, a school of great enlightenment, uh, training generations of young Armenian men, uh, and was. Uh, established already in the 1820s, in the 1820s. Uh, and you see the uh, student body and faculty of the Mesropian, they come to school uh, dressed with jackets and ties and white shirts, uh, not very much like my students at UCLA. <laughs> uh, and here you see a science class with uh, a graduating class with their uh, professor of, of science. Uh, sports. This is the Mesopian School's uh, athletic club. Kedek Marzagan from Perishad Garevoren Askain Vokin Zarkats Nerubamash. And athletics are very important in development of national identity, national sentiment, patriotism. And here you see one of the sports clubs of the, um, of the Mesopian School. Um, Nearby, uh, another school looking very much like the Mesropian is the uh, school for girls, Rebsinian school. Again, remember in the 19th century, uh, female education, women's education was not widespread. And here we had a very progressive city with uh, advanced teachers, advanced students uh, in, uh, in the Rebsinian school. Here are some of the students and some of the teachers. And here is a, a graduating class, and they're white, and uh, the woman sitting down below was the headmistress of the school. Thank you. Was the headmistress of the school. We have Tishbach Trunetza, Hazarin Ardas Nidhim Tvaganin Amran, Amus Nuhet Sebastiaga Gernavir. We have Iren Yev Pornetzin, Aksoretzin, Yev Spanetzin, Ais Gina, Yer Amus Nuhet, Minchte, this is the Armenian uh, Mokhtaris school. The Armenian Catholics were a very significant element. Uh, their mixtures with the Levantines and uh, very uh, progressive uh, and uh, large uh, Mokhtarian academy. Again, Armenian sports clubs. So, Arara, Baskuragan. Uh, soccer for the main part, football, and Armenian Boy Scouts. The American College, with a student body made up overwhelmingly of Greeks and Armenians, very few uh, Muslims enrolled in the American College in Paradiso. Student conference at the college. Uh, here we have uh, some of the intellectuals who went to the Mesropian school, uh, Voskan, Chilingerian, Mamurian, um, Dedeyan. These four men alone translated well over a hundred or a two hundred perhaps European works, uh, classic works, into Armenian. There was a great thirst for European literature. So they wrote their own literature, but at the same time translated. The entire repertoire of Shakespeare was, was translated to Armenian. Uh, Moliere, uh, Scott, uh, Tolstoy, Goethe, from Russian, from, from German, from French, and from English. They were proficient in these languages and able to translate uh, into uh, Armenian for the uh, public that was thirsty for this kind of literature. Not all Armenians were intellectuals, and you see they were famous also for dried fruit. Uh, these are the figs, tuzne. Vora, vora, izmirtsinere, smirnatsinere, perin, fresno. 
Dëngjelsin aq nëjnë të përë, je më përshë fresnëvi, kjusë sa e ngo më, kërë 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 Fig Garden. E dhe më përshë Fig Garden në himë në vazë ajës Izmiri të zëru rra, borë më ka e së tërë Elmas janë je këpaj në rru kërë zërën në. Here you see the Almasian fig factory and they brought all those plants to California and spread the fig groves of uh, orchards throughout. And carpet weaving was important. And here at the Armenian Library and Museum in uh, Watertown, several uh, handiwork, Armenian handiwork from Smyrna. And lace and linen. And around Smyrna, there are many towns, and I, you know, I didn't know much about these until I organized a conference and actually visited them. Uh, places like Menemen, Manisa, Turgutlu. Turgutlu um, used to be known as Kasaba, and it's the birthplace of Alek Manogian, who was the uh, longtime president of the Armenian General Benevolent Union, was born here in in Turgutlu or cassava as it used to be known there. And that's where we also get, if you know fruit, we have a cassava melon. And the cassava melon also comes directly from, yeah. from here. And down in uh, this city of Udimish, uh, I had never heard of it, but they had here schools and churches and all the way down to uh, Aydin. <coughs> and that's the big arc around Izmir where we have these Armenian communities. This again is still Smyrna, the Bardis Banyan mansion, not in high notes, uh, Army, the very rich Armenians lived outside the city. Uh, one of the suburbs of Karatash, uh, outside of Smyrna to the north, and look up on the hill, that was Sukkarabed, Yegelsi, Sukkarabed. Yev Vartanyan Tabratsa, Boraisur Kalkain Tankarana. It's always good when they use Armenian churches or schools for something because that way they are preserved even if they're not preserved in their original form. Vartanyan Antebrotsa of Karatash. Here you see the students. Uh, Manisa. Kirkachach. Anyone ever heard of Kirkachach? This is Kirkachach and its church of Surk Aswazadzin. And its students and um, parochial school, the, about uh, 40 miles from Smyrna. And now we're at Midimish. And look at this. We have at the top the Gomidas Goma Choir of Midimish, and down below, interesting, a fraternal sports match between the Armenian football team of Smyrna that have come down about six hours journey to Udimish, and here we have the two teams, the Armenian teams from Smyrna and Udimish uh, together. Uh, students, the graduates uh, from the Udimish uh, Academy, and now we're at the fire. Um, I think I want to stop here and, uh, well, let me go on and just show you, and then I'll come back to it. Here's the great fire. It's, I mean, huge. Uh, and you're seeing a, a little, pic, little part of a, of a whole kilometer of flames. This is into the European quarter, into the Greek quarter, including the American consulate, uh, the Armenian and Greek sports club, and so forth. And again, you can see the borders of the fire. Here are the refugees. Look at, look at the bottom of the picture. You might recognize a flag. Do you? American Trosha and Nava Bod. If Skispa Chambers and the rest got the gun there. Pakistan there. And here they are. This was the Greek Archbishop who was warned that he should leave the city and Asavoj. I seem to call him in Chabogurt. The Avami Chabi Sarachi Zoho Tartsa Charcharetsin Yiren. Amen Hashman Tamarin Gudretsin. Achkere Poretsin. They tortured the Archbishop of Smyrna to death uh, as soon as uh, they took over the city. Yeah. 
Here you see the burned out city of Smyrna. Uh, buildings in shells. Look at the top, the uh, sports club where uh, Europeans, Armenians, Greeks were members, like a country club. And then look down below, you see the same sports club after the fire. Here the American consulate, before, up above, and down below the American consulate with George Horton, who was the American consul and who's written a book titled The Blight of Asia, Asia in which he details the Smyrna fire and uh, how the Turkish officers and soldiers went from house to house burning with lit um, torches, burning uh, the city. And here you see the ruins. And it stayed this way for about 10 years until uh, they began to rebuild the city. And they rebuilt it in such a way where you can't recognize anything Armenian anymore. All the streets are changed, all the, uh, the layout of the city has been changed, and the closest that I could find to anything Armenian was at the fairground where a few trees remained, and you know, Armenian houses had balconies. A couple of old, old houses had those balconies, and that's all that could be found. I want to um, show you a brief video of actual footage, and then I'm going to conclude.
Turkish government to this day insists the city was burned by Armenian revolutionaries. <laughs> and make a very uh, strong argument saying, why would we burn the city when we had captured it already, when it was all ours, when we needed uh, goods and supplies, so we would be crazy to burn it. But the Armenians didn't want it to fall into our hands, so they burned the city. And they had um, some supporters. At the time when the French were making a deal with the Turks in Cilicia, in Giligia, uh, emptying all of Giligia, uh, two uh, uh, British admirals came to Smyrna after the fact and said, you know, oh, well, we really can't blame the Turks for what happened. Uh, and there were others as well who said, well, uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, the Turks would not do this now that they had captured it. On the other side, there's very strong and convincing evidence by people like the American consul George Horton, who was consul that was right there, and who was an eyewitness to the burning and to the uh, men who were doing the burning. Uh, the uh, head of the American school for girls, which also burned, uh, Annie, uh, I've forgotten her last name, who was there and uh, described how the Turks were going in and out of the houses, burning them. But I think that probably most convincing, and I'm, I'm glad that we're in that age now, is a, a work by a Turkish uh, sociologist, anthropologist, a woman professor at Boğaziçi University, it used to be known as Robert College, who uh, specializes in um, sort of public space, in public space. And uh, she has done a lot of interviewing, a lot of studying of the situation, and she rejects the Turkish state narrative. And she says that the burning of Smyrna, and again I could quote it, but I think I won't, was an act of punishment of the Gyalur city, an act of punishment which, and the fire was an act of purification. The country was being purified of its Christian stain by removing the Christian elements, by burning the city, and leaving a no possibility of the Christian population could ever return here. And so she says this is an act of cleansing and purification. Uh, then she puts it into the perspective of the burning of Smyrna means the end of the multinational, multi-religious, multicultural Ottoman Empire that had existed up until that time, and instead moving toward a Turkish nationalist nation state based on one people, one religion, one culture. And the burning of Smyrna is a part or a very symbolic part of that process. It's kind of a Turkish professor. And she's brave enough to be in Bolis at this time in Istanbul, at this time, as I said, it would be impossible for her to have written that some years ago, but there is a little hope. Uh, I want to uh, just end with uh, a couple of the views of uh, modern Izmir, a beautiful city, European style looking. Uh, when I went with Vartijer uh, two years ago, she said, I don't recognize this as being Turkey, uh, because it looks for her and to many others as being uh, a very uh, beautiful uh, European uh, looking city. So let me, let me just conclude by showing you a few slides and making a uh, next, oh, do I have that? Okay. Here, here is uh, here's the modern city of uh, Izmir on the bay, uh, highly developed. We're taking this picture from top of the Hilton Hotel, 34 stories, and the Hilton Hotel is in the heart, not in the heart, on the very edge of Hainos. 
Here you see the modern city again, the high rises. Now I want to end with saying maybe there's a little hope. We've heard that Akhtamar has been renovated. We hear that Dikralagir uh, Subkiragos has been renovated. We hear that uh, Malatya Church of uh, Sub Yerortujun uh, uh, might be uh, renovated. We hear of other churches that might be renovated in Turkey. Uh, I had heard, I had read somewhere that were in this uh, town of Menemen, about a half hour drive from um, is, from Izmir, that there was uh, still an Armenian church standing, the name, whose name, which name is Subsarkis. And so, uh, without knowing where we were going, we parked there. We sat on one of the Dolmush, Yerduvi, Marshrutka, uh, to um, in that direction. We didn't know where we were going, and suddenly I had a feeling, and I told the driver to stop. Uh, and we crossed over the road, and within five minutes, we just, you know, if you want to believe in providence, it's very providential. In five minutes, we had come to Sub Stepanos. Uh, I'm sorry, the Sub uh, In not in very good shape, I'll show you. Uh, here's the interior that we took last year with a Nasser group. Uh, uh, but the good news is that it's been declared a historical monument by the city council of Menemen uh, and under UNESCO along with a Greek church in Menemen and again something that is sort of new uh, should we be happy should we be unhappy should we be happy that there are churches being renovated with nobody there to worship but just structures it is a, a difficult question but nonetheless I leave you uh, with the Armenian Church of Subsarkis in Menemen, and we'll see how it develops. We recall and remember um, Smyrna this year, Izmir this year, uh, as the Greek world is commemorating it, uh, we too, as Armenians and as victims, need to share in that, because we too were victims of Smyrna as the final phase in the destruction of the Armenian people, the Ottoman Empire, which we should hopefully commemorate in very innovative and effective way in two years. Thank you.